Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Paul, and I am a nerd. And here we are having more fun than we're supposed to on a Monday afternoon because we are getting ready for the Practice Master Virtual User Group Meeting from Attorney Computer Systems, where today we are talking about standard holidays. Mary Jo is going to take that topic, how to set up holidays in Practice Master so the Practice Master knows their holidays. It's not that hard unless you don't know where to look. And I'm going to talk about the quickest way that we've found to make labels in Practice Master. And so now, without any further ado, I will press all the right buttons to get us back to Practice Master so that Mary Jo can start talking about standard holidays. I need to unmute myself so you can hear me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's January, and we're getting ready to set the holidays for the year, if you haven't done so already. Now, t Practice Master is just going to assume the normal holidays that are, you know, normally listed in the United States. So, you know, uh, we're going to have Martin Luther King Day, and you're going to have, um, you know, Easter and Christmas and Memorial Day and Labor Day and all of those holidays that are the standard holidays. But if you do something different at your firm and you don't need to have maybe you, your staff doesn't get Martin Luther King Day off or whatever, or maybe you give your staff the day after Thanksgiving off, and so you want that to be a holiday. It's not recognized as a standard holiday, but you want to make that a holiday on your practice master calendar, or Christmas Eve and Christmas, or whatever, or maybe you've got some other things that you want to put out there. Um, we can change what holidays that we're looking at. Um, there is also Jewish holidays, so you can do that. Or if there's other holidays you need to add in and create a group of, we can do that too. So we're going to go up to the calendar up here at the top in your menu, and we are just going to go down to our standard holidays, and I don't see them there, so I'm going to just go ahead and type them and search for them. I thought they were on my list there. So I'm just doing standard um, holidays, sorry, holidays, we'll find it. And it's not under holidays either, <laughs> because I can't type. Holidays, hello, holidays, there. All right, I've got it. Holidays by venue. There we go. It's a Monday, and it's minus something outside. All right, so here is our standard holidays. So this is by venue is what that is creating. Now, by venue, what does that mean? It just means that you're giving it a different name. So our standard holidays is a venue. If I do the drop down, we've also got Jewish holidays as a venue. So if you just want to add to the standard holiday venue and just have it all be on one calendar and everything is under the standard holidays, which I would recommend, if your employees are all looking at the standard holidays, then that's where you're going to want to put those extra days off that they get. Uh, if you go by the Jewish holidays, that's fine. You can switch this and you can look at the Jewish holidays, make sure they're in the right spot, and if you have extra days for that, you can do that too. And I'll show you where you apply this in the user settings. But the standard holidays is the default. And so that's what everybody is probably already set to. And if you want to change it, I would just recommend we'll modify the standard holidays. Now I'm in like 2014 because I'm in sample data. So this is like old school stuff here. But I'm gonna go out here to um, December. And right now we've got the day after Christmas is marked as a holiday. Anything in red is what this is recognizing as a holiday. So I'm seeing December 25th and 26th. Well, maybe we don't do the 26th, we give the 24th instead at our firm. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on the 24th and I'm going to unclick, whoops, I need to mark that. Let me go over here to the 24th. I'm gonna mark that and then we are gonna to go to the 26th and I'm gonna unmark that. And so now what I've done is I have changed the 24th to a red holiday and I've changed the 26th back to a black ordinary day. Now, um, yes, so I'm gonna go back to the 24th and here's our holiday description. So I'm just gonna put in there that this is Christmas Eve. Okay, and then we'll go ahead and go to the next one, that's Christmas Day, and then if you give the day after Christmas off as well, then I could click that and as soon as I click on this mark, it opens up the holiday description for me to type what it is. So we can just say day after Christmas. If I can type, my hands are freezing. There we go. Whoops, I got it. There we go. And then I've got a description in there for that. Any other days that you want. So for the day after Thanksgiving, we've already got it checked. If you don't get the day after Thanksgiving off, we can click in here and we can unmark that. Now the description goes away and it turns it back to a black day. It's no longer a day off. If I want it back, 
going to mark it. And then I've got the day after Thanksgiving. Now, in this one, I've already got um, a description there. And you can see that it cuts off. It is limited on the length of the description here. Um, that's my final letter. I can't type anymore. Um, so be wise in how you name uh, the holidays. But if you had like a staff retreat or something like that, and you wanted to add that to the calendar as a day off or any of those kinds of things, this is where you would do that. So once this is in here and it's done, this is real time changing. There is no save. I've already added those days to the calendar and they're in there now. If I go out to the calendar, those would show up on my days off as you know days that, we, the, that are holidays for all the staff that are using the standard holidays. Now you can copy this. I could take this standard holidays and I could copy the venue and then I could add in, I could give it its own name. I'm just gonna put copy of standard, okay? And say, okay, it will create all those same days I already had marked on my standard and then I can add and change to it as well. But in this case, then I would have to go out and assign this new version of the holidays to their calendar properties. And I'll show you where that lives in just a second. So just be aware that if I don't modify the standard, which is pretty much the default, you know, that's what everybody should have on their calendar properties, I'd have to make sure that everybody goes and changes it so they're looking at the right calendar view to show the holidays that I want them to see. Now, so we pretty much recommend then that they yeah. they work in standard. There's yeah, that's no need what to, I said. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay. Now, if your if your firm recognizes the Jewish holidays and all the Jewish holidays are on here correctly and you've got everything in there, that's fine too. But you'll just want to make sure in calendar properties that you have this set for everybody as the Jewish holidays and so on. Um, so you can merge venues, you can copy venues, and you can delete venues, and you can just add brand new ones as well. So now that I've got this copy of standard and I've just created this junk one, I'm going to just go out and I'm going to delete it. So I'm just coming in over on the right side, deleting the venue, and now it's no longer on the list. So it's a really easy way for you to mark those extra days off that you might have that don't fit the standard, um, and that's where they're set. Now if we go over to our calendar properties, so I'm going to get down here. And there was my holidays by venue. I couldn't see it because, <laughs> well, my you know, my screen's still a little funky too. So I, I do have a little bit of an excuse, but not much. Um, but here is where those holiday venues are set by user. Okay, this is a user setting. So you can see it's defaulting to the standard. That is the standard um, setting out of the box is go to the standard holidays. But people can change that. So this is something user by user. As you log in as each user or each user comes in, you can tell them, hey, we're going to switch this to the Jewish holidays or we're going to switch this to the one we created, whatever that is. Um, or if we leave it the standard and that's what we always modify, that should be their standard and what they see on their calendars. So when they look at their calendar, they'll see what you've changed here. It'll push out automatically. Let's go look at one real quick. What does this look like? So let's go into a calendar and just look. Well, I don't want the calendar file. I just actually want to go into the calendar. Out of that, and just go to the calendar, and, and we're just going to go here. And so I'm just going to get into somebody's calendar, and I'll go to Ron. That's fine. And I'm going to go out. So there's to, Thanksgiving right there. Yep, right here. Day after Thanksgiving is there. If I go out to Christmas, there's our Christmas Day, and I took off. I think those other ones. I think I deleted those off of there. So. Um, they're not on there anymore. So they're like special calendar entries that can't mm -hmm. be changed. They're, they, they, they aren't part of the calendar. They're part of the holiday. That's cool. Right. Yep. That's awesome. Oh. That's how I took away all our holidays. I just yeah. went in and deleted them from the standard <laughs> standard holidays. Uh -huh. um, and Mary Jo knows how to put them back. I'm going to talk about labels. And the reason I'm going to talk about labels is that there are a lot of different ways to do it. Um, but we have found that the easiest way is what may on the surface appear to be the hardest way. The reason I say that is if I go up here and type labels, we will get into a, uh, a report that comes with Practice Master, and I'm not a big fan of this report. There's also a client labels report, and then there's client labels one by four report. The reason I'm not a big fan of it is because it doesn't really give you much control. It assumes that the labels, the way they display on the screen, are the way exactly that you're going to print them. So instead, what we recommend that people do is that they create a very simple report in the report writer that kind of spits all that stuff out. The client, you, 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 you create the report on the client file, we'll look in a second, and it spits out all your clients, 
you merge that with a merge, uh, you use the wizard in Word to simply merge that with some labels, and you end up with a Word document that then you can go and, and fiddle with. Maybe you need to change a name, and, and uh, it's supposed to be one way in Practice Master, but a different way on the label. Maybe you're going to temporarily change in one of the addresses, but you don't want to change it in Practice Master. Maybe you're going to augment the way those labels look by adding something else to them, or maybe you're not going to use one of the standard formats that is built into Practice Master. You're going to use a, a different type of Avery label or an Office Max label or and any of the labels that are out there. So the theory behind this is that we simply create a report. And I'm going to go into reports. All right. And so this one is the one that I created. That was Mary Jo's correct that this is the one that I created. And I just pulled it up when I typed it in. And so I'm going to go into modify this report. And this may be daunting to some, but to others, it's not a big deal. But all I did was I opened up the client file. I made sure to give it a name so I could find it later. And I selected an output type of export as MS Word Mail Merge. That's the important part. And then I basically just put the fields I wanted out in this, in this record. I wanted the client's full name, the address, address two, address three, city, state, and zip. That's all I have in here. And when I produce this report, it looks like this. We'll go look at the file in a second, but this is what it looks like. Let's zoom in a little bit, maybe to 400. And so what we end up with is a file that has all of the clients, all of the matters, and their insurance company, or their, their insurance companies, their, their addresses, city, states, and zip. Now, if yeah. you have, go ahead, Mary Jo. Well, I was just going to say, the way that Paul just created this report is very, very basic. So you're seeing repeats and stuff like that. This is just all, is this a client dump? It's all the clients in the system, or you could have selected a parameter of clients. But this report could be made a million different ways yeah. to narrow down your information, only get select clients, and so on. So when you're looking at this, just know we just created a very simple report for you guys That's to, see how, this to works. see how it works. Yeah. Now, by by doing it that way, we do have, as Mary Jo points out, we have the power of the report writer in Practice Master to say, oh, I only want one record for clients. Maybe you don't. Maybe you deal with insurance companies and you want a record for each matter for whatever reason. Maybe the labels are for a matter specific mailing. Um, maybe the ma labels are specifically for a client, but you want to, you only, you want different ones for each person that may be a different contact. And you can do that. That's a little bit more advanced filtering. But the reason that we think this is so simple is because then what you're doing is you're simply using the, 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 uh, mat, what do they call it? The wizard in Word to create these labels and to merge this data. Now I'm going to go ahead and show the desktop because on the desktop, I have this text file that I've created, and you'll see that it looks exactly the same. Now, if I go into Word. So while Paul's opening Word, what he did is he just saved that report to a text file. So when that output came up, he was previewing on the screen so you could see it, but you would just save it then as a text file, give it a name, and save it to your desktop or wherever you can get to it. And then that's what he's done there. So I went in and printed it, and instead of saying preview, I said, save it to a file. I said, okay. Mm -hmm. I put it on my desktop and I called it a certain thing. It's, it's already defaulting to being a text file here. Then what we do when we go into Word, we simply merge this. Now, some people know exactly how to merge in Word. And some people, I find that for the most part, people are glad to see it in this format. They're like, oh, then I go into Word and I merge it? Okay, good. I know what I'm doing then. Others don't. So. Mary Jo, help me out here. We're just going to do a quick basic um, overview. Um, we don't have to go through all the steps, but you're really going to mailings up here at the top. And once that opens, you're just going to do start a mail merge over here. And I just click the drop down and use the step by step mail merge wizard. This takes you step by step through each process and you get a little next, next, next. So it's what are you creating? You know, you're going to create labels, next. Um, it's going to ask you, oops, I think, okay, that's good. Um, what do I want to create? Well, I want labels. What kind of labels? Go to your options here. 
um, and you can choose your label formats. There's all these different ones out here that you can pick. Once you do that, you're clicking the next, and that's when you select that file. Um, so I'm just going to use 5160 address label, say OK, next. So a nice little wizard here. And I'm just going to browse out to that text document. That's how we're going to find it. And then there's some other things. You know, you actually get the browse. Do you want to go all the way through it? Or, yeah, might um, as well. Okay. I wasn't sure where, how far you wanted to show a lot of to it. So let me close the World Docs. Um, whoops. Okay, whoops. World I know, Docs. I know. I just clicked it too fast. Browse. Um, whoops. Cancel World Docs. Get out of that. Okay. Let me get out to the desktop. And there's your label text. So I'm just grabbing that file that Paul had. And this gives me like a quick little option that I could come in and look at. I'm just going to make it a little bigger so we can see it. That there might be some things in here, like I see some stuff that's missing addresses, or I don't want to include that one. This is kind of a spot checker that you can come in and actually manipulate some of those labels right here on the screen. Now, you also have a chance to do it after they're in the label itself, but this gives you a quick little preview of what it's going to bring in. So I'm just going to say, okay, bring them all in. That's fine. Next. Next, we're going to arrange our labels. So how do we want to arrange our labels? Um, you can throw in, um, I just do more items because these are the fields I did from my report. And we just come in and just put all these in there. Um, whoops, I'm just having like such a hard time today getting my stuff out of here. Um, click happy. So let me go to more items. So I've got the name. I'm just putting them all in real quick, and then I can organize them after. Otherwise, I have to close this window every time, and it's kind of a pain. So now I can just come in here, just do a quick little. And I'm just moving this stuff down to make a label. Okay, I'm just showing it where I want it. Address one, two, three. And there's ways in your report that you can, um, well, I'm not gonna worry about it, but you can just make this look like, like you want. City, state, zip, et cetera. Let me add those back because it's going to look funny if I don't. Um, I think state, they went off. State, zip. I don't think, I don't know if they did. I think it's, well, maybe they did. You're right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not seeing them. No, that's all right. Anyway, so you you pick your items, okay? And then we're just going to do next. It's going to preview them. Yeah, I don't think I have them. And they will all be in your labels. And then you can flip through them and you can look at what you have. So here's like a bunch of labels. Maybe. Oh, we should have populated the Yeah, others. I got to do all the records. Yeah, we forgot so, to populate yeah, here, the other here, records. Here, this. And so you're updating all labels. That's another key there to get all those fields and all the labels. Then you do next. Then we go ahead and it'll pop the information in. There we go. So then you have your labels in here. Now remember, we had some junk information we, out there. And we got the city state. Yeah, city state. It. It's just that the point is we're just trying to come in here and get our labels like this. And you can flip through if you have multiple pages, um, different recipients, and so on. The last thing is you're actually going to go ahead and um, you're going to look at these. And then you have an option. Did I go back? I need mm -hmm. to go forward. I really got to fix that one here. Um, OK. So now you can edit the current labels as well. So I showed you in that first screen where you can kind of go through and pre-edit on there and fix some of these things if you need to, or just don't import some of those. That's fine. But now you can actually come in and you can edit these. You can go to certain records. You can say, yeah, just edit all. You can come in and actually type in this and then print these out. Um, so now I'm in a Word document, label document that I can manipulate any way that I want. Print them on my labels, and then you're done. So that's a very, very fast, very crude, crude overview. Man, but but you get hard. the idea that you've got the data to do it now. The point is, all we're doing is pulling the address information out of Practice Master into a format that Word can then work with. Most of our clients uh, are, are, are not nearly as well versed in writing a report that's going to do exactly what they want as they are in taking that data and, and merging it with, with Word labels. Uh, m many of our clients know way better than Mary Jo and I how to set up these labels in Word and how to do other things with them. Maybe you also have a letter that's going out. Maybe there's a different type of label. There's just so much more flexibility. And our client's knowledge tends to center more in the word side than in the practice master side. So what we've done is we've simply created a very simple report to pull the information out of practice master, put it on the desktop, and then we manipulate it in Word. 
Um, we find that that when somebody comes to us and says, how do I do labels in practice master? And we give them their two options, nine times out of 10, this is the one they choose because it's so much more comfortable for them. And that's, that's really the secret, is don't spend your time trying to make Practice Master do the labels exactly the way you want them. Just use Practice Master as a conduit and a tool to get the data out in a format that Word can work with, and then use your expertise in Word to get those labels looking exactly the way, the way they want them. Practice Master, when it was originally written and had that one by four label, that was for a certain format of Avery labels, okay? As you can see, when we went into Word, they had every conceivable format of Avery labels. So if, if you if you said, oh, we need we need two across and eight down for this odd Avery label that I've found, trying to make that happen in Practice Master as opposed to simply pulling the data out of Practice Master and making it happen in Word is is much more difficult. And that's how we get to that. Next month, we are going to talk about the Check for Updates functionality. It's been there for a little while, but we find that a lot of people don't understand how it works and why they're sometimes getting critical update notifications and why sometimes they're they're not knowing that an update's out there and ready for them. It's also uh, uh, it's also useful in simply you know solving some problems. Uh, support might tell you, or we might tell you, oh, you need to be on the latest version. There was a fix for that and knowing how to check for updates is key to, to making that happen. And I am going to talk about the database folder that's been added to the data structure in version 19, explain what that means, why you care about it, what things you may need to look for when you update to version 19, and we have this new database folder. And I'll explain why it's so cool if you have Platinum to uh, help you protect your data. All those things we'll talk about next month. And of course, as we know, it wouldn't be a virtual user group meeting if I didn't take you out to our website and explain just how to get back to all. I think I just muted myself by hitting the wrong button there. There we go. There we go. Come on. I feel like that guy in the commercial who's holding the dollar bill on the end of the. Almost got it. There we go. So if we go to attorney computer systems. Dot com. Notice my emphasis on that last S in the word systems because without it, you're not going to get to the right place. Um, hover over or click on the word videos in the menu bar. As you can see, if we if we hover over it, we get a little drop down. But if you click on it, you're taken to something that gives you even more detail. So I usually click on it. And here you see the six video titles that we have. Now you know already that we have virtual user group meetings because you're at the Practice Master virtual user group meeting. We have three of them actually. We have one for tabs, the one you're at for Practice Master, and we have one for World Docs. And we have one more live event. It's our coffee pot webinars. Uh, so we'll go into a little more detail on all of these in a second, but I also want to tell you that we have two pre-recorded video titles. We have Mary Jo's eBytes video series, uh, and the Paul and Mary Jo Show. In the eBytes video series, we take cool things that we think you should know about and that we think we can explain in three minutes or less, and we record a video about it. Mary Jo does. She records three of them each month, one on tabs, one on Practice Master, one on World Docs. Really cool stuff, really neat tips and tricks and, and shortcuts that we can explain very quickly. For those things that are cool that we think you should know about, but that we're going to take a little longer to explain, we have the Paul and Mary Joe show. These can last 10, 15, 20 minutes sometimes, where we'll take a deep dive into something that's a little broader and takes a little bit longer to explain all the concepts and, 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 and functionality around it. Uh, and then uh, we also have, of course, our live events. So I'm going to take you into the more info for Practice Master just to show you what we're getting here. With every video title, when you go down to the actual page that, that describes it, you get the title up here, a little brief description of what the, in this instance, what the Practice Master Virtual User Group meeting is. Since this is a live event, we have information on the next occurrence, the next event, which is February. And as I told you, these are the two things we'll be talking about. Uh, we used to have links to register, and we got rid of those. We brought the form right out to this page. So all you really need to do is click on uh, these fields and fill them in and click on register, and, and you're, you're done. You'll get an email that tells you exactly what to do to get to that event. Now, as you scroll down, you will find recorded versions of everything that we've ever done before in that particular title. 
And uh, this is the one you're in right now, so it's not here yet. It's 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 going to be sent off to Brad for post production any minute now, and we'll have it back in about a week, and that's when it will show up. Um, and then as we scroll down even further, we've got the recorded versions of all the others. So a lot of content here. We have somewhere between 800 and 900 videos on our website. We produce about eight, nine or ten of them each month, and uh, we think that you should be taking advantage of it. You can browse around like I've been doing, or you can type something specific. Maybe you want to know how to email statements and tabs. You can type email and hit enter, and one of these items is going, that pops up is going to talk about emailing statements and tabs, because I know we did a, a virtual user group meeting, I believe, on that. So take advantage of it. It's there. It's free. It's available 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. Nice thing to, you know, get a glass of wine, sit by the fire, and watch videos of tabs and practice master and world docs. That's it for today. Everybody have a good rest of the day and a good rest of the month, and we will see you in February. Bye-bye, everybody.